I don't think it's ever a good idea to voice your concerns in the heat of the moment. You know, when people are angry, they tend to say things they don't mean. So I thought I would wait a couple of days before making a blog about the Oilers' effort on Saturday night. Now let me preface all this by saying, even though I don't feel like wearing a jersey or a hat today, I love the Oilers. L for love. Good times. But that doesn't exempt me from being critical of my team. Case in point, the video I made back in December 2014 that basically went viral around Alberta when I called the organization out for a lack of accountability. And guess what? That lack of accountability is still paying dividends this season. In Daryl Cates' misguided attempt to replicate the team's five championships in seven seasons, he is veering dangerously close to winning five championships in seven seasons. Now, don't get me wrong. I firmly believe the Oilers have done the right thing and started at the top with Shirelli and McClellan. I trust these guys have a plan and that they're moving the team in the right direction. But what we saw on Saturday night was all on the players. And it had nothing to do with the score. That game could have been 10-2 or 1-0 for all I care. It was all about the effort. And that same effort that we've seen for years is the reason I haven't been to an Oilers game since December 10th, 2011. See, my wife and I used to go to a game once a year. But after a few years of going to the trouble of driving for a couple hours and paying big money just to see them go through the motions, we pulled the plug on that tradition. That effort was a byproduct of year after year of the Oilers' core players not being held accountable. And on Saturday night, in my eyes, there were at least two players that played their way off this team. Jordan Eberle and Taylor Hall. And it pains me to say this because I like these guys. I really do. And it's not a reflection on these two individuals. It's an indictment on the men who were tasked with developing them. They were mishandled from day one. They were gift-wrapped spots on the team, and they were never made to answer for any mistakes or temper tantrums. Instead, the coach always paid the price. And compounding that problem was the big money, long-term deals Tambellini signed them to. So what we have today are a couple of guys in their mid-20s who still play like teenagers. Now, I'd actually seen a lot of progress in Hall's game earlier in the season. He was being way more responsible with the puck in the offensive and defensive end, and he seemed to be giving it everything he had on a nightly basis. But ever since the All-Star break, he's just fallen right back into those deeply ingrained bad habits. These guys have been in the league for six years, and both of them still turn the puck over like crazy, they struggle mightily in their own zone, and occasionally, like we saw on Saturday, they just take the night off. These young men needed to be taught right from the get-go that as a professional, you don't take a night off ever. McClellan should not have to publicly rip these guys in his post-game media scrum. He's a coach, not a babysitter. It's time for these guys to go, and not because they don't have any value. They absolutely do. They need to be moved out because the team has got to get rid of the country club atmosphere in that locker room. It affects the entire team when some of your top scorers don't bring it every night. It's even worse when those guys wear a letter. There are big changes coming in Edmonton this summer. That is it for me this season. I'll probably see you shortly after Gary Bettman's head explodes when the Oilers win the draft lottery. See you then.